That's right. We just got off the phone with the son of the suspect. Now, the suspect's name is William Hardison. He is 63 years old. His son is also named William Hardison. He is 40 years old. Now, the suspect's son is a truck driver. He's based in Georgia. We spoke with him while he was on a route. He was actually stopped in Ohio, and he spoke with us about the trauma that he and his family are going through and their efforts to try to reach out to their father about this whole incident. Let's play a little bit of what he had to say. Hey, Dad, please surrender. Please give up. If you have children and grandchildren, I love you dearly. Please stand down. What do you like as a person? Uh, he's a great, uh, he's, a, he, he, he's a very stern individual. You know, he's a man's man. You know what I mean? But he, he stands on what he believes in. And when, when, when he believes in something, he's going to fight tooth and nail about it. You know, but he's a great person outside of that. You know what I mean? So, uh, now based on what we were, based on what we were talking about earlier, does he believe that this house rightfully belongs to him? Yes, very much so. Why is that? Because my uncle, you know, my my uncle passed away. You know what I mean? And you know that you know he, like I said, he only had a few more years left to pay on the house. You know what I mean? So. Why would it? Why would they sell it to someone for twenty-five thousand dollars when hundreds, of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars they put into that house? You know what I mean? They just redid the house. They just remodeled the house in the process of him passing away. And behind me now, we can hear the sound of some shots being fired in the distance. Maybe a flashbang to try to draw out uh, Mr. Hardison. You heard his son there talk about the transaction, the, the sale of the house, and this is a very tangled family story. What happened was the house was owned by the suspect's brother. Now, he died last year, and when he died, the will turned the house over to the father of the suspect, William Hardison, and his brother. Now, the father then sold the house to a local real estate company and they are the company that filed the eviction proceedings against William Hardison, the 63-year-old William Hardison, who is still barricaded inside the house. That pr process started earlier this year. William Hardison has been fighting this process and refusing to leave the house. Now, according to the court records, he has been in the house now for five months without paying rent, and that is what led the authorities, a judge, to order the eviction to happen this morning at 10.30. Shortly after that is when the gunfire broke out. But as you heard from William Hardison's son, the senior William Hardison believed that he deserved the house, and there was some bad blood between the father and the brother who ended up taking over the house. And so there's, again, a very tangled family story, but right now what you have is a family down in Georgia who is concerned about Mr. Hardison here, as well as their own children and grandchildren who are very concerned watching this whole situation unfold. Back to you. Paul, have they been able to speak with him at all? No, they have tried. Just moments ago, I heard from Teresa Hardison, the daughter-in-law. She said her husband, who you heard during that interview, he has been speaking with one of the negotiators in this case. So they're trying to get him in contact with his father. They've been trying repeatedly throughout the day to reach out to him, but they have not been able to. And we had also heard uh, from some other sources, Paul, that this uh, person, Mr. Hardison, who's holed up in the house, is a military veteran who just lost his brother. So that does, uh, does sort of check out with what we've heard in the past uh, maybe hour or so about the individual that police are trying to extricate uh, from this building. Uh, we showed a picture of, uh, I think it was Mr. Hardison's son and his uh, daughter-in-law there. Um, you know, if you can, Paul, just kind of put into words um, what that family is going through right now, knowing that their father is at the center of this. Well, they're, they're, they're very emotional about this. They're obviously very concerned about him. They acknowledge he's had some problems with the law in the past. Uh, he's never done any, any hard prison time. He's been mainly involved in some minor criminal activity. But their, their main concern now is that he get out safe and he surrender, and they've been trying to push him to surrender. And, and that's why 
they wanted to speak with me in order to try to get the word out to him that he needed to get out for the sake of his family, himself, and his grandchildren.